This is an important topic and one that you're probably not going to hear much about because so few people understand what's going on. And so what I'm giving you here is actually cutting edge information right at the front before anybody else has heard it because this is one of the first times I'm speaking about it. What I've got is about nine years of hospital admission data, huge Excel files for which I am analyzing, looking at patterns pre and post pandemic. Because based on my anticipation of what is happening, I expect that there are going to be a lot of unusual changes in the way that disease presents. And one of the things that I'm talking about now is to do with sepsis. This is a big topic, and I've got this from the UK Sepsis Trust, where they were highlighting, or I highlighting, that sepsis is pretty serious, 11 million deaths per year. I'll go through some clips from what they're talking about as to why it's so important. And critically, I'm going to be looking at the fact that when I've done this analysis, there seems to be a consistent decrease in the number of diagnoses with sepsis. And what that means is that when somebody dies or is discharged, there is very often a specific code that is assigned to their diagnosis. And that code then gets put with a large volume of data so that we can analyze trends. I just don't think anybody's particularly interested in analyzing the post-pandemic trends, because if you do, you then have to explain why in the world are so many things going off? Sepsis is one of them. So, as I said, the UK Sepsis Trust has a number of frequently asked questions. And this is just to help you to understand what is sepsis about. So, what is it? It's a life-threatening condition that arises when a body's response to an infection injures its own tissues and organs. Now, this is important because the body's immune response to the infection does damage to its own tissues and organs. This is very similar to what happens in autoimmunity, where the immune system is targeting the own body and destroying it. So sepsis, in some way, triggers the immune system to do a similar thing. And this is part of the reason why we saw so much damage in the pandemic with regards to COVID. Sepsis can lead to shock, multiple organ failure, and death, especially if not recognized early and treated promptly. This is the important bit. When it comes to the treatment of sepsis, the most important thing is about speed. If you don't start treating it quickly, this is where mortality occurs. And so if you are not getting the antibiotics in within an hour, of the diagnosis, the mortality rate is significant. And so this is why when you're thinking about it in the context of hospital medicine, when you are looking at the sepsis six, this is the critical thing that is being highlighted here. You call for help, give oxygen if required, send off blood tests, give antibiotics or antifungals, give fluids, and then ongoing plans. And you need to do this essentially immediately in order to reduce the impact. So the point is, is that sepsis is pretty serious. And if you miss it, it can lead to significant mortality. The question is, why would the trend be going down post pandemic? And this is now the simple insights into what is happening. Now, Part of the reason why I think that there is a reluctance to look at these things is because when you see me go through these patterns, I'm going to be highlighting what is likely based on my analysis. Remember, this is my analysis. This is not from uh, the UK uh, statistical organizations. This is just me interpreting the science based on my understanding of the research, based on the facts, and critically, based on the fact that I know how hospitals work. So what we are likely to be seeing is a failure of recognition of sepsis. So let me explain that again. The sepsis numbers 
are likely to be going down because sepsis is not being recognized. Now, where we see this most commonly is when somebody, say, for instance, is on chemotherapy. They're immune suppressed. They come into hospital. They are not very well. They are not responding normally to treatment. They don't have a temperature. Sometimes they look okay. They're not looking too frightening. And then suddenly they get very unwell. And that's because their immune system has been suppressed. And it's almost as if when it finally responds, it responds too aggressively. So fundamentally, what I think we are seeing is that more and more people are looking as though they are immune suppressed. Follow me here. Think about what I'm saying. Because of the COVID pandemic and because of actions around the COVID pandemic, which has increased the risk of people getting more and more infections, this virus literally neutralizes the immune system. This is why, as I pointed out just yesterday, that's why we're going to see increased cases and earlier presentation of flu right after COVID surge. You'll see increased RSV. You'll see increased mycoplasma. You'll see increased streptococcal infections, all because this virus suppresses the interferon response. It technically is making the immune system broadly appear to be immune suppressed. And when you see these patients, you know they are unwell, but they don't have a fever. Sometimes their blood pressure is low. They don't look right, but they don't fit the typical pattern of what we call sepsis. So when you look at the characteristics based on what this uh, UK Sepsis Trust has pointed out as to how to spot it in adults, you can see over here, slurred speech or confusion. Sometimes they may be more confused, but they, they are oftentimes not necessarily that much worse than they were. Extreme shivering and muscle pain. These days, the most you will see is just the temperature. You're not seeing rigors anymore. They just don't look the same. Not passing urine. Yep, that could definitely occur. Breathlessness. You will learn from COVID that it seems to take out the ability of the body to respond to hypoxia. So you don't necessarily see them breathless as well. Feels like you're going to die. That unwell feeling is usually the immune response into leukin-6 interferon. If that has been suppressed, that feeling is not there. Skin mottled or discolored, at that stage, in this kind of presentation, that's what we would call, or what I would call, peri-arrest. That means that that person is just going to go off, drop their blood pressure, need intensive care within minutes, so to speak. I'm just saying that we are seeing a transition in disease presentation. Now, a lot of people will say that's not true. We don't agree. There are no papers to prove that. Well, I've had to do this the hard way. And as I said, we are looking now at huge data sets to try and see if we can make sense of what is going on. And this is huge numbers. And just to give you an idea here, this is just um, an example in here, looking at how many diagnostic codes have to be gone through. We are talking about over 6,000 lines of code that can now be analyzed, powerful data sets that make us be able to know something is not right. It's not just in my head. There is a change. As to what exactly it is, we won't know until we actually really study it. My argument has been for the past four years, why are we not doing autopsies? I mean, it is just unbelievable that we are not getting published autopsy data to look for unusual patterns around people who are dying. And critically, I've said this, I have to be very clear, I want to see autopsy data, especially post-COVID, in the vaccinated cohort. What is the mechanism of their death? How does it happen? Why does it happen? There are so many layers that we have to uncover. 
so many things that we have to figure out. And this scientific narrative that everything is fine, move on, is definitely, in my view, going to blow up in our faces. We need answers. And from a clinical point of view, if there's any lesson that you should have learned by now is from the pandemic, follow your instincts. Don't follow what people are telling you. Because all around you, you can know something isn't right. Our responsibility is to figure it out, even if the political narrative is not interested, even if the industry narrative is not interested. Our job, because we still advocate for patients and need to find answers for them, our job is to figure it out ourselves. Then, once we've done that kind of analysis, help to try and make things better. Thank you for listening. Remember, like, subscribe, comment, look in the description below, support the work that we're doing. And over the next few weeks and months, I will continue to show you the conditions that are increasing and decreasing post-pandemic and try and analyze what is the mechanism. Look forward to sharing more information with you in the near future. A hero, an immune adventure, Humming Heroes, your lyrical guide to the body's defenders. Now on Amazon, check the links below.